Hello and welcome to the main cave. Now if you own a Steam Deck, have one on pre-order, or are simply thinking about one and you've looked up some accessories, you may have come across a company called JSOX. Now you decide, is it JSO, JSOX, or JS Orcs? I'm sticking with JSOX and I will be throughout this video. They sell a few tech pieces online, but it's their Steam Deck accessories we're going to focus on today, and more specifically, their latest dock, the V2 HB0603. I'm going to go through with you what I think is great and what I think doesn't quite work with it. So currently there is an official dock in the pipeline, but with still no word on its arrival as of September 2022, companies have stepped up their game with their alternatives and hence why this JSOX sent this over to me for look at alongside all of my other Steam Deck accessories that I went through in my other video a few weeks back. So the Steam Deck for me is primarily used as a handheld, but sometimes I do like to hook it up to my 65 inch LG C1 TV for some casual gaming when at home on the sofa. Therefore, a good dock is essential. I currently use two other hubs with my Steam Deck and I'll be keeping them to use on my monitor at my desk, but this dock now sits under my TV for when I use it there. And it's probably worth noting now that no matter how good a dock is, it has to work within the limitations of the Steam Deck. No dock will make the Steam Deck a 4K Elite gaming PC, but what a good dock must do is fulfill the potential of the Steam Dock within reason. Also, JSOX have also announced a new dock with an M.2 memory slot arriving in a few weeks, but that starts at $130. And I also saw another dock on their website earlier with an extra DP port for an extra $10. Both of these look good, but I still believe that this one, the V2 dock, will be their top seller, what with it being cheaper and having everything you need for most people wanting to play their Steam Deck on their TV. But having a DP port is useful if that's what you need. So let's crack on then as I run down 10 things about this dock that make it so far the best Steam Dock experience you can currently get in no particular order. First up is price, which for me is a very important factor. If you look at Amazon for what appears to be similar spec docks and hubs, you'll see that JSOX is around the same price. There are loads of hubs from companies such as Anchor and other non-branded versions, but look a bit closer and you'll see for the money you may not be getting what you get in the JSOX dock. A non-branded 4K dock for $40 on Amazon looks appealing, but take a closer look and it may not have all that you get in the JSOX dock, such as 4K60 and gigabit ethernet. If you go to the official JSOX website it's currently $50 with free shipping and as I write this if you sign up to their newsletter you can also grab a cheeky little discount okay the dock is so popular right now shipping times have lapsed to a few weeks but I can get this shipped to the UK for free for only 32 pounds I think that is a great price for what you get and as I'll explain in this video I'll go through everything that makes this dock good value secondly is build quality it weighs in at 133 grams, it's 14 centimeters wide and three centimeters high at the back portion. This does cover the fans, but only by a tiny bit and I haven't noticed any reason for concern here. It is predominantly plastic with what feels like aluminium all the way around. It has four rubber feet on the bottom to prevent it slipping on your desk and more rubber feet on the seat, of which we'll talk about next. The USB-C cable at the back is of good quality and relatively flexible with it being permanently attached to the dock. It has JSOX written on the front and each port on the back has a decent clear label. Overall, it's feel a very well built piece of kit. I'd have no worries throwing this in my bag if I ever needed to take it away with me. Thirdly, this gets its own section and that is the seat. As I mentioned earlier, it has a rubber protective insert. One large pad at the back with two more at the bottom holding the steam deck in place. The angle it sits at is perfect, but as you can see, mine is a bit more upright, but this is due to me having a phone kickstand on the back that I don't want to get rid of as I do use it so much, but maybe I will do one day. Even so, with the kickstand on it, it still fits in the dock pretty well, albeit a bit more upright. If you do have a grip on that though, you won't be able to use it with this dock, but a skin such as the D-Brand skin is perfectly okay. Fourth up is 4K60. Now running the Steam Deck at 4K60 isn't absolutely necessary when docked as you can get away with 1080 looking fantastic. But as it has been shown, you can push it that far with varying results. I have read people have had issues with not being able to hit 60 or it not even showing on a 4K monitor or TV. So I tried to replicate this. I've tried my setup in various ways and I could not get it to not run. No matter what I did, it worked flawlessly on my C165 and my C155 inch TV, but every time I used it, I used a decent HDMI cable. 
Fifth is all of the ports. There's plenty of ports on the back of this, and if like me, who runs a pretty modest setup, you won't need any more than there is. As I said earlier, there is another dock I've seen on the website that has DP, but HDMI should do for most people. There are also three USB ports, which leads me nicely onto number five, which is specifically the USBs. They are 3.0, and although the 3.0 isn't the latest, it's good enough for what it is. And with three of them on the back, you have one for a mouse, a keyboard, and anything else that you may need to plug in. Using a wired mouse and keyboard with the dock was fantastic, and I also tested a 2.4 wireless mouse, which also ran great. Transferring files via an SD card and an SD card reader was good enough, but I didn't get blistering speeds, but then again, that might be due to the card and the reader itself. Seventh is power delivery. Now this is important if you want to charge your Steam Deck as fast as you can. There is a USB-C power delivery port on the back and the JSOC stock claims that it can charge up to 100 watts, which is great for a load of devices, but maybe just a bit over the top for the Steam Deck as that charges up 45 watts. So at least we know we're gonna get the fastest charge possible. So when I plugged the dock in using my Anker mini plug, it charged as fast as I'd expected to, as if it was plugged into just the official charger direct to the wall. Eighth on the list is the Ethernet port, which to be fair is a good and a bad thing. So if you want to see the bad, just have a look at the end of the video. So the Ethernet itself is a gigabit Ethernet, so it means you can get decent speeds via the cable. It's always a good idea to use Ethernet over Wi-Fi, as your ping and your speeds will be what Wi-Fi is minimum, and in most cases, far better. As you can see, I've bought a 90 degree cable for reasons that I'll go through at the end of the video. Ninth on the list is the USB cable. The 90 degree USB-C cable on the back is a perfect addition. It's designed specifically for the Steam Deck, so the length of cable is perfect to run onto the top of the Steam Deck down into the USB port. It's flexible and it has a great length to pop in the Steam Deck and not have too much cable hanging around at the back. The end of the cable feels aluminium and it has the JSOX logo branding on it. Tenth, last but not least, this dock is not just for the Steam Deck. It can handle anything USB-C. The seat and the USB are all designed with the Steam Deck in mind, and that's what its main uses are for. But if you do have a USB-C device that you want an extra USB or an HDMI out, then this just works fine. Here I have my iPad Pro plugged in, so as long as the device you have can output via USB-C, you're good to go. The only consideration really is the location of the dock and the cable. This fits my iPad great, but for other devices, it may not be as a neat a solution as you need it to be. So there we have it then, there's 10 things that I love about this dock, but is there anything that I don't like? Well, as it happens, yes, there are. There's a couple of things that it could do better. Firstly, it's good enough for now. For example, the USB is a 3.0 and the ethernet is a gigabit. The official Steam Deck dock, when it arrives, will most likely be on par with this, but probably better. And as long as the price is right, that will probably be the go-to dock for Steam Deck owners. Secondly, another gripe is the placement of the ethernet. Sticking out the side makes the setup look ugly. And although I solved this with a right angle cable, it's an extra expense I didn't want to have to pay. I could just stick to a regular cable, but as you can see, it doesn't look as sleek as I could do with another cable hidden around the back. And finally also, it doesn't work with their grip. As I mentioned earlier, JSOX also sent me a Steam Deck grip, and this won't fit the dock whilst it's in this grip. That's a shame, but it does work with a skin and a kickstand. So personally for me, that's not too bad. There we have it then. There's a look at 10 things I love and a few things I don't love about this second generation Steam Deck dock from JSOX. And for me, this really is at current time, the go-to dock for the Steam Deck if you want a stand combined. I'll leave links down below of where you can get hold of it. Go and have a look down in the description and do leave me a comment. Until the next video, bye-bye.